Act Two of The Enterprise of the Mayflower by Amice MacDonald. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, August, sixteen twenty, Southampton. There are two entrances, right and left. The Mayflower is supposed to be lying at the wharf at the back of the stage. Enter left, William Bradford, with a sack, quills, and paper. Here, after twelve years, we stand once more in England. Yet not to stay, alas, not to stay here. Twelve years we spent in Holland among the friendly Dutch. But we were, for the most part, simple farmers and unused to cities. We feared our children would forget they were English and speak a strange tongue. Nor could we eat the stranger's bread without earning it and poverty came against us like an armed man. So, now behold us here at Southampton, but not to rest. We dare not abide here, for us it is ever away, and westward ho. Our possessions in England are sold. We have put all our money and lives in a venture to cross the great sea and make a plantation in the north of those wide lands of the Virginia Company. We have besought the king that he would grant us freedom of religion there. Here come our good friends, Carver and Cushman. Enter, left, John Carver and Robert Cushman, with baskets. If we make a plantation, t'will be a miracle. Since we resolved to leave Holland and sent our messengers to London, we have been through seas of trouble to get the king's permission and our patent from the company. His majesty said we might go to America. Leastways we should not be prevented. Had we the king's seal as broad as the house floor, it could be reversed if afterwards there was a purpose or desire to harm us. I have continually urged that we make haste and be gone before we be prevented. Here come good Master Brewster and others of our company. Enter left, William and Mary Brewster, Priscilla Mullins, carrying bundles. They move to right of stage. Here we are at Southampton. And yonder is the wharf, where the Mayflower lies, which is to carry us to the new country. Who is the stranger who approaches? Enter, left, Captain Miles Standish, who walks up to William Brewster. Who are you, good gentleman? Captain Miles Standish. We heard of your warlike deeds when we were in Holland. Aye, indeed. And I have heard that you are a brave people who are going to make a plantation across the seas. I will go with you, if you will have me. Go with us, Captain? Yes, you are a peaceful folk, and know little of warfare. You will be in peril from savages out there. I am a fighter, and I can defend you. How will you join our society? I'll put my money in your venture. In civil matters, I obey you. In war, I command. Here is my sword at your service. Will you have me, or not? Tis an excellent offer. To others. What think ye? Let the captain go with us. Let, Let him, him come. come. You shall be one of us, Captain Standish. Good. I will go and get powder and shot and muskets. We may need them. Are you going too, mistress? We all go, Captain. Tis well. Adieu. Goes out left. That is a brave man. But fiery withal, as report has it. He is small of stature, and they say little chimneys are fired the quickest. Nay, Priscilla, speak not so of our protector. But look you, we must see that all our provisions are put on the ship. I must go, to give directions and place and safety on the ship. The books we brought so carefully from Scrooby, and then from Leyden. William and Mary Brewster go out right. Carver takes up basket. Here are loaves for the voyage. Goes out right. Cushman takes up basket. Ah, me! There are plums from the old garden. Alas, the hand of the ungodly and the stranger will gather the fruits which we have painfully nourished. They are fair plums. Say not that I have been negligent. Goes out right. I have brought a sack of meal, and moreover these quills and paper for I propose to write down some day the history of our enterprise. 
Perchance these, my scribbled writings, which I will piece together in times of future leisure, may be a word of comfort to those who come after. But we tarry. Are you coming, Priscilla? Goes out left. Enter John Alden, right, whistling. Starts back and bows. Good morning, fair mistress. Can you tell me where the Mayflower bound for America lies? Yonder by the wharf, sir. Are you one of our company? I'm John Alden, a cooper, and hired to go with you. I make the trimmest barrels that ever you saw. Stay, I will show you. Runs out right and fetches barrel. Re-enters just as Standish comes in from left with his powder cask. They collide in center of stage. Priscilla stands laughing. Alden jumps aside with a bow. Enter left, John Billington. Standish to Alden. Gently, young man, in this barrel is that which would blow us all up to the skies. Blow us up. Murder. In that cask? I cry your worship's pardon. I'll get behind your worship. Or rather, I will go boldly in front. Tries to run away, right. Alden springs in front of him. Who are you? As good as you. I go to this New England with my wife in these firebrands. I fear we shall be left behind. Ducks under Alden's arm. Ellen, Ellen, come. Rushes out, right. Enter left, in haste, Ellen Billington. Where's my husband? A most foolish, blustering man was here a moment since. Tis he, tis he. I want him to carry our goods to the ship. Run and fetch him, young man. Nay, do not smile, but run. I will run. I will not smile. Runs out, right. Ellen Billington sinks down on Priscilla's bundle. I'll wait here. Fans herself with her apron. I am near dead with chasing since we resolved to leave London where we dwelt, and come with you into the wilderness. We shall starve there. Have you butter in that cask, good sir? No, madam, not butter. Gunpowder. What is gunpowder to me? I can't eat it. The savages may eat you, madam, if we haven't the gunpowder. I have to protect you all, have I not? Yes, Captain. But see, here comes poor John Alden running. Re-enter right Alden, panting, to Ellen. Your husband is out of sight. Ellen Billington springs up and turns on Alden. You let him go, you bat, you snail. I'll find him. Runs out, right. That pair will be a plague. They joined themselves to us unbidden. Well, we must go to the ship now, and I must take this. Stoops to pick up bundle. Let me take it, mistress. Nay, I will carry your bundle. Thanks to you both, but only one of you can carry it. Ah, the captain is a great man. I am nothing. So he has the better right. John Alden did ask me first. Ay, he did, first. Well, you have her word. So take the bundle, Alden, and I will follow with the powder. We must all on board. Priscilla and Alden move off right, followed by Standish. Scene 2, September 1620. On board the Mayflower at Plymouth. Enter on left, William Brewster, Captain Standish. John Carver, William Bradford, John Billington, John Alden, Robert Cushman, Mary Brewster, Priscilla Mullins, Ellen Billington. Brewster and Standish stand in the center, others grouped on either side, Cushman being at extreme right of stage. Now are we all met together. A fair wind blows, and we are ready to depart. Much time was consumed after we left Southampton, for we had to put into Dartmouth to repair our second ship, the Speedwell, which is now abandoned. The Mayflower alone carries us over the ocean. The hour of departure has come. We must say farewell to the friends we leave behind. Ah, oh, it is hard to say goodbye when each look and word doth pierce the heart. Truly, dear friends, I need courage now. 
you know that i did my best and labored diligently to covenant with the london merchants for the setting forth of our venture when matters go wrongly blame me not it is the seaman's fault and not mine that the speedwell leaketh and that you will be packed in one ship alas the waspish fury of contentious men hath undone me and now at the last i am seized with such a weakness that i fear i could but serve as meat for fishes if i came along with you then you will tarry behind alas i should but die if i did otherwise poor master cushman you will join us one day yonder maybe mistress brewster maybe i shall pardon my weak manner i must on shore farewell shakes hands with each in turn they all say farewell to him he hobbles off left only the strongest may abide this venture we have a letter here from master robinson our preacher he remains in Leyden to succour the old and feeble who stayed behind there then i wish i were old and feeble i begin to not like this business <laughs> you can stay can stay say you never we are going to america leastway i am you can stay and starve in england but i am minded to do so across the ocean chicken-hearted come come master robinson warns us in his letter against quarrels ay quarrels listen ellen i listen listen to me silence billington trembles he says that as men are careful not to have a new house shaken with any violence before it is well settled and the parts firmly knit so we must be careful in our new colony not to be shaken by disputes that is wisdom finally master robinson gives us much comfort and says he is a well-wisher for our hopeful voyage may we prosper i trust so indeed whistle heard but now the mariners call it is time we moved with the tide they weigh the anchor and the moment for departing is come draw hither that we may look for the last time on this land alas never again shall our eyes behold these meadows and cornfields these homes and the places where our fathers lie buried oh. <laughs> weep not we go to make a new england beyond the sea no the sands have run out quickly and the anchor from the deep rises and the sails are filling with the fort that will be anywhere he grows and bears himself across the ocean wide bring the ship of thy poor little safely to the other side Tears the sea hath water salt enough without our share. We who sigh one day rejoicing shall our sheaves of corn prepare. Fare you well, who hide behind us, witness of the vow we made. If thou lead us through the waters, we pass all around this day. All pass off slowly, right, as if to the end of ship to see the last sight of the coast. Scene 3. On board the Mayflower. At sea. November 1620. Table, with paper, ink, quills, at back of stage. Enter John Alden and Priscilla, left. They say the mariners have brought us out of our course. Nine long weeks are gone, and still no sight of land. You're pale and weary, Priscilla. Oh, what a night of tempest we have had! We nearly sank in that storm. See how the waves still roll to and fro. Aye, and here, alas, is another tempest. 
Here comes John Billington, railing at all things. Enter left, John Billington. How now, Master Billington? How now? Speak not so sharply, Mistress Priscilla Mullins. I am half dead with the tossing of this most intolerable ship. We have all been sorely tossed. Tossed, tossed by mad bulls. If you like, I care not. I tell you, there is not to eat. Aren't we all hungry? That comforts me not. This is a foolish voyage, and we should not listen to that hot-headed knave, Miles Standish. No more of that. Truly, soft. Here comes the captain. Enter left, Captain Standish. Good morrow, Mistress Priscilla, and fair weather. During the storm, the mariners were oft seen muttering together, and was said they doubted the ship's strength sufficient for the voyage. Shall we ever come to shore in safety? The Mayflower will weather the tempest. Tis strong under water, though the upper works are leaky. Twas a main beam which had sprung. We had all drowned last night, Captain. Had you not devised a way to keep out the water? Then you have a good piece of iron and not me to thank. By means of a strong iron bar, we forced the beam back into place. We have come too far north. We shall not land where we intended. But these shoals and breakers would show that we are now not far from shore. <sighs> oh, folly. Jonah was lodged better than this. Who's that? Ho, oh, John! Art dying? To be drowned at sea, to be killed, when we get to shore, to be cooked and eaten by savages. Would I might return. It is over far for you to swim back to old England. You are nearer the new world now. Swim home. That is a foolish jest. Cold wind, cold water, cold sky. I am freezing. Here, then, stir yourself. We must have muskets in the wilderness. Come with me, and see that our arms are not wet with salt water. I am weary. Let that vain coxcomb help you. Come, Billington. I am weary, I tell you. Come, come, so am I. Seizes Billington. Come along. Billington's hat comes off. Standish and Alden carry him off, struggling. Hold! Men of violence, hold! Standish and Alden go out with Billington, right. Priscilla laughs and throws the hat after them. <laughs> Take thy hat, old Marjoy. <sighs> Yet I would we were all safely there. It seems we must use much patience ere we come to the end of our pilgrimage. Goes out, right. Enter William Brewster and Mary Brewster, left. Another night is gone. Time creeps on. Think you our food will last. It will be winter weather when we arrive. We have somewhat, but much is damaged by the sea. The water casks are low, and the bread we bought in Devonshire waxes stale. We must keep all we can for going ashore. Let us look forth. The daylight is behind us. In front, all is dim. Yet, can you see nothing? Only the sea through the mist. I thought I saw something dark. Low down. There, there, look. Can it, can it be land? We have looked so often in vain. Y yet wait, perhaps you're right. Yes, hark. Voices outside cry, land, land. What's that? They sighted land. William and Mary Brewster turn round. Re-enter Captain Standish, right. Good cheer. The mist has lifted, and we are near land. Re-enter John Billington and Ellen Billington. Near land? Now we shall run on the rocks. Enter John Carver, left, and William Bradford. I can see a good harbour. The trees grow to the very edge of the sea. Re-enter John Alden, right. Oh, what a glad sight to see the shore. Now our real troubles begin. To be cooked and eaten. Oh, oh. I'll throw you... Peace. Peace, friends. We have departed somewhat from our course. 
and with these adverse seas we shall not be able to go southward now and make the shores of hudson's river we are in sight of the new country and of a good harbor and soon shall step on land for matters of religion master robinson hath left me as your guide in war we look to captain miles standish in civil affairs we make john carver governor long live governor carver i hope we shall all live long but i doubt it now draw hither a table and set quills and paper alden and bradford set table etc here is our compact shows a paper we the loyal subjects of king james have undertaken for the advancement of religion and the honor of our king and country to plant the first colony in the northern parts of virginia and we all promise to obey the laws which we find it good to make let each sign his name each in turn signs paper solemnly tis dated cape cod this eleventh day of november sixteen twenty and now let us go on shore all move off right scene four the coast of america winter weather the sea is supposed to be on left sticks and branches lie on the ground william brewster john carver captain standish william bradford john alden john billington mary brewster priscilla mullins ellen billington standing in a group with brewster mary brewster standish and carver in the centre the rock beneath the sand behind the awful sea with cheerful voice over the waves over the wind we brought to safety now rejoice now rejoice now rejoice we brought to safety now rejoice the fiery pillar still by night shall guide thy people on their way moving on is our sight the cloud to lead us through the day through the day through the day the cloud to lead us through the day Upon the straw thy ark shall rest, and here thy banner be unfurled. Here shine forth, and to bless, that shall invite us to the world, to the world, to the world, that shall invite us to the world. How good it is to stand on firm ground, though this is a desolate country. The snow is our carpet, and the sky and the bare boughs are only roof. Come under my cloak, Priscilla. The wind blows. You are very cold. Takes Priscilla under her cloak. We will kindle a fire under this rock. Here are some faggots. Fetches sticks. Come, bestir yourself, Billington, or you will freeze. This is an abominable land. It were better to be cooked by the heathen than abide this cold. You should rejoice to be on land and escaped from the rolling sea. The sea. Talk not of that. Come, we must all help. They pile up sticks. We must see what country lies around us, and if Indians are near. And we must also find a place where we can build our homes. Someone must stay to protect the women. I am ready to stay and shield them. Flourishes a stick. At least... I will guard the fire. I would not stay if I were a man. You are not, Ellen. No, indeed. If I were, I would go with the captain. I will take Billington, whether he will or no, and Bradford and Alden with me. Master Brewster, will you stay? Verily, if thereby I can best serve you. Then we are ready. Speak not for others. Have a care to yourselves. I... We go forth like lambs to be eaten by savages. The Indians may be hidden. Be not rash, John Alden. Captain Standish goes out on right with Carver, Bradford, Alden, and Billington. Brewster and the women go out left. End of Act Two